I said, do not give up, fight like there's no tomorrow. He said, I love you, Giselle. And I knew that that was going to be a gut-wrenching last-minute words that I'll never forget. Giselle Aguirre and her adult sisters were sick with worry. Both their parents, Daniel and Maritza Macias, had been suffering with COVID-19 for over a week. Now their dad was being rushed to a hospital with breathing issues while their mom was quarantining alone at home. I didn't say bye to my husband. He was rushed right away. There is this, this um, anxious feeling, this, this heaviness that he's not coming back. A few hours after Daniel was admitted to Pomona Valley Hospital, Giselle and a doctor agreed to put him on a ventilator. Before they did, Giselle asked the doctor if she could pray for her. She said, sure, like with a real like timid voice. I started to pray over her and I asked the Lord to just use her hands and, and may he work through her. And at the very end, she, I, heard, I said amen and she said amen. Then the family started a prayer chain that quickly spread across the country. A short time later, the doctor called Giselle back. And she said, your dad has been intubated. I did not, and I've never done this without doing this, but I did not have to put him in an induced coma. And she goes, the God who you are praying to, he heard your prayers. We knew that prayer was going to be the, the crucial rock to how we were going to stand in the most darkest of times. Over the next two weeks, Daniel remained in critical condition. During that time, Giselle and her sisters started having a daily worship and prayer time on their parents' front lawn. We sang and we literally felt like the heavens were just being opened for us. We would just sit there crying because we knew that mom was standing behind this window and dad is in a hospital where we don't know if anyone's even touching him with a sense of love. Still quarantined inside her house, Maritza was anointing family pictures with oil and praying for her husband. I would anoint him in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and I would, I would talk to Danielle, you will live and not die. Danielle, you will live and not die. And I asked the Lord to give me a peace in my heart and to, um, to remind me constantly of his scriptures. Yet Daniel was not getting any better. It was during that time Giselle spoke to one of her dad's doctors. He says, we're really running out of our resources. At this point, your dad has a 20% chance of living. We were very discouraged, but we had so many around us lifting up our arms. In our weakness, we felt the strength of others. With time running out, Giselle and her sisters agreed on an experimental treatment where their dad would receive a plasma infusion from someone who had the COVID-19 antibodies. However, finding a matching donor could take days they weren't sure Daniel had. We fasted from that night all the way to the next day. We just believed that plasma was coming. The very next day, we get a phone call and they tell us that a donor has donated their plasma and it's exact same match as my dad same blood type, and we were ecstatic. We were like, oh my goodness, this is so awesome. Lord, you are so powerful. Daniel received the plasma after 16 days of being on a ventilator. All they could do now is wait. And we just prayed and prayed that that plasma would just really work in, in my dad's blood and would, would reverse things for the good. And it did. The very next day, Daniel started to improve. On day 19, Maritza called to check on her husband. She and her family were amazed to learn Daniel was off the vent. We screened my sisters. We, were, we called my grandmother. We called all our prayer warriors. I mean, we just told everybody, rejoice, thank God, dad is off the ventilator. There was only one thing Daniel had to do before he could go home. Doctors told me, listen, you cannot go home until you start walking and start talking. I think the Lord just gave me the power. I asked him for the, for the power and he gave me the strength to walk. On May 12, just over a month after entering the hospital, Daniel returned home. Our dad was here. He was home. 
This is home now. It was not complete until he came back. I said, oh God, you did hear us. You did, you were paying attention. You heard our prayers and you answered our prayers. It, it, it made me feel like I was wanted. I was needed. Later, the community celebrated Daniel's recovery with a drive-by parade. He and his family continually thank God for answering their prayers and encourage everyone to call on God for help in their time of need. So we do not stop praying. I don't care what the devil says, but the word says that God heals our diseases. There's nobody else can heal me but the Lord. You just want to yell out and say, thank you, and everybody can hear you like a, an alarm, you know? There was many hard times, many tears, but when you stay focused and do not allow the enemy to tell you otherwise, you will win this battle through, through Christ's strength, and that is the only way. Of what Daniel's wife said, I don't care what the devil says. <laughs> you know, God's word says, whose report will you believe? The reason I believe that's in scripture is because God is able to do anything and everything. It doesn't matter the circumstances, what, what is being said about someone's prognosis. Prayer changes things. And we want to take some time to pray for you today. You know, that was a family who stood in the face of very difficult, very negative reports and situations. And they just began to declare the goodness of God, began to declare faith over Daniel, faith in life. And they saw a turnaround. Amazing. Yeah, it's a great story. And it's a great story showing the intersection of faith with medical science. Mm -hmm. Here you have, okay, well, I don't even know who's going to pray for him. And, and we can't get access to them. We can't lay hands, but, you know, let's just trust God and let's start praying. And then you hear over the phone the nurse saying amen. And you're going, okay, God, God's at work. Things are happening. And then uh, when, you, when you get put on a ventilator, well, that's actually really bad medical news. But for them, it became good news. Well, we didn't have to go into a coma. I've, I've, never, had to, I've, I've never had to do it this way before. It shows God's at work. And then you hear about a plasma that, that can help fight this horrible disease. And here's the statement they said, we just knew, we just believed that the plasma would be, we, we knew it in, in our innermost being, we, we just believed. That's the key, when you just believe, when you know that you know that you know that you know. When you rely, whose report will you believe? That's what Terry just quoted. The reason it's, it, that's in the Bible, whose report will you believe? Will you believe the negative or will you believe that with God all things are possible? It's my favorite time of the show. We get to pray with you. We get to lift up your needs to a loving Heavenly Father. He loves you so much, He died for you. You don't have to convince him. You don't have to bargain. You just have to believe. And when you come believing, he always responds to faith. His eyes are going to and fro over the whole earth to show himself strong. For who? To those whose hearts are loyal, to those whose hearts are believing. Let's pray. Let's believe. And let's let God do all the rest. Pray with us. Lord, we lift everyone in the audience, everyone who is having trouble, everyone who is having disease, anyone who has pain in their body. Lord, we come into agreement with them right now. Mm -hmm. And we say over them, be healed and be made whole. Uh, there's a woman, you're not even praying, you're not even asking for it, but you have lingering pain in your sternum from open heart surgery. The bone never knit together properly. Uh, and so it just causes you discomfort. God is speaking to you directly. You know exactly what I just described. You have it. In Jesus' name, that bone is being mended. Everything is going to be fine. You'll be able to breathe easily and freely. No more problems, no more pain in Jesus' name. Yeah. Terry? Yeah, this isn't a physical need, it's a financial need. It's someone, you have a, an issue with your vehicle and it has to do with the tires and uh, you just don't have what you need to replace it. But God is going to supply that for you and it's going to come in the most unusual way. Just anticipate it and begin to thank God right now. Lord, we thank you. 
We thank you for the, all that you do, all that you are. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.